Now we are continuing with IS1 paragraph 69 and 72 to 76. We've already looked at paragraph 69 and paragraph 72 to 75. We will now start with paragraph 76. Let's look at paragraph 76. In respect of loans classified as current liabilities, therefore we've already classified them as current liabilities in terms of the previous paragraphs. If the following events occur between the end of the reporting period and the dates when the financial statements are authorized for issue, that IS-10 period, those events are disclosed as non-adjusting events in accordance with IS-10 events after the reporting period. So the events they're talking about here that we have to disclose is refinancing of a long term on a long term basis, rectifying of a breach on a long term loan arrangement, the granting by a lender of a period of grace to rectify a breach of a long term loan arrangement ending at least 12 months after the reporting period. So we've already looked at these events. So if these events happen after year end, we've said those conditions didn't exist at year end. Therefore, we've classified them as current liabilities. We've already looked at these events in the previous slides, but this paragraph just tells us what we need to disclose. Okay, and seeing that this event happened after year end, we said it is a non-adjusting event in terms of IS-10 because those conditions didn't exist at year end. Paragraph 76, just as a summary, we've said we've classified these liabilities as current liabilities. The event occurred between the end of the reporting period and when the financial statements are authorized for issue. These events were refinancing, rectifying of a breach and granting of a grace period. We've said that these are non-adjusting events because the condition didn't exist at year end. Therefore, we need to disclose it as a non-adjusting event in terms of IS-10. Then very important, as the condition didn't exist at the end of the reporting period, then therefore it is a non-adjusting event, like we've said in the previous videos. Just as a summary for all the paragraphs we've already looked at, paragraph 72 says it is a current liability when the payment is due within 12 months, even if the original payment terms were for longer than 12 months. Then also, if refinancing happens after year end, it still remains a current liability. Paragraph 73, we had to go and look at did the entity have the discretion to refinance? If they did not have the discretion, it was classified as a current liability. If the entity did have the discretion to refinance for longer than 12 months and they expect to, we classified it as non-current. For paragraph 74 and 75, there were breaches in the provisions of a long-term arrangement. Then we said it is a current liability if we agree with the lender after year end. But if we agree with the lender to extend the payment beyond 12 months before or by the end of the year, it is a non-current liability. So here we looked at when did we agree with the lender. Paragraph 76 says, we have classified these liabilities as current and it happened between year end and authorization date. It is a non-adjusting event and therefore we disclose it in terms of IS-10 as a non-adjusting event. In the next slides, we'll be looking at examples, at, a, at an example and uh, the solution. Let's look at an example of Sport Limited. Sport Limited has a 30 June year end and its financial statements are authorized for issue 30 September. These dates are very important. In a theory question, there's a lot of things that you guys need to identify that trigger certain theory criteria. And this will lead you in what you need to discuss for this theory question. So Sport Limited bought a piece of land from Team Limited 
during the year 30 June 2012. The land was registered in Sport Limited's name on 1 January 2012. The land, the land was financed with a loan from ABC Bank on 1 January 2012. The loan is payable in full on 31 December 2012. So let's just stop right there. So we have a 30 June year end. We need to pay this loan in full 31 December 2012. That's within the next six months. So in our normal rules, it is within 12 months. Therefore, it is a current liability. But we have to go and read further if there's anything else that this question tells us. And then they say, under the loan agreement, refinancing of the obligation is not under the discretion of Sport Limited. Okay, so what theory and what paragraph that we've done already triggers that for you? Okay, so which paragraph does this trigger? Then, on 31 May, Sport Limited applied for refinancing, but ABC Limited only agreed on 15 August 2012. So, 30 June is our year end, 30 September it's authorized for issue. And only on 15 August, they, ABC Bank agreed that they will refinance the loan. In terms of refinancing allowance, the loan is payable in full on 31 December 2012, which is more than 12 months now. But we've already said that if this refinancing happens after year end, right, we've said it's a non-adjusting event. So we have to go and look at what else this example tells us what will help us to determine whether this is a current or a non-current liability. Okay, so the paragraph that we've identified here is paragraph 73. Okay, the question is whether the loan should be classified as a current or a non-current liability. So you have to state the relevant Theory. You don't have to know the paragraph numbers, but you need to know the paragraphs. Okay, and what they say, what's the rule? Paragraph 73 says that if an entity expects and has the discretion to refinance or roll over an obligation for at least 12 months after the reporting period under an existing loan facility, it classifies the obligation as non-current, even if it would be otherwise due within a shorter period. How However, when the refinancing or rolling over is not at the discretion of the entity, the entity does not consider the potential to refinance the obligation and classifies the obligation as current. So this is very important. So in your theory, you state both options, if the entity has the discretion or whether it does not have the discretion. And in your application, you state which one. Is applicable to this situation. Okay. Then for our application, we say Sport Limited does not have the discretion to refinance. The determining factor for classification is whether the conditions existed at year end or not. Very important. So we always go and look what conditions existed at year end. At year end, we did not have the discretion. Only after year end did ABC Bank agree to help us refinance. But at year end, we had to pay within six months. So on 30 June, Sport Limited did not have the discretion or the approval to refinance the loan. Then always a conclusion. Consequently, Sport Limited will classify the loan from ABC Bank as current. In the Statement of Financial Position 30 June 2012. Even though the refinancing for a period longer than 12 months after the end of the reporting period was granted. Okay, because that condition did not exist at year end. Okay, so we have looked at all of the paragraphs, um, paragraph 69 and 72 to 76, and it is very important for you guys to know when. A liability is classified as non-current and when it is classified as a current liability.